Day Trading Radio presents a Bright Eye Trading Production. Good evening, traders. This is Bry Guy with Bry Guy's Tools of the Trade here on DayTradingRadio.com. And I want to thank all of you for checking in with us here. Just having a little bit of an earlier episode than we usually do at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, roughly. We ran the other show over a little bit, so we're getting started a little bit after 5. And that is, of course, Eastern Time here, April 2nd, 2013. I hope your day is going well. And we're going to take a look at the Speed Trader DAS Trader Pro platform. I've got it all updated with the latest updates. And we have uh, Speed Trader Craig, who's going to be calling into the show in just a moment. And we'll take a look at the platform. Cute little quote I found here from Emil Phillips. I don't know if you ever have seen him before. As he says here, a computer once beat me at chess but it was no match for me at kickboxing. Sounds like the kind of thing Learjet would say. And with that in mind, we have our caller signing in already. Welcome to the show, Speed Trader Craig. Hi, how are you doing today, Brian? Doing all right, doing all right. I'm just, just adjusting some volume here for a second, if you give me a minute. Yep, you do that, and what I'm going to do right. is see about getting your control to my other monitor because I think you're probably looking at my Skype screen right now if I'm not mistaken and um, let me get the DAS Pro platform up yeah. see it now well, wait, well, I saw it there for a second <laughs> yeah I'm just gonna move it to my other monitor where I'm broadcasting from and let me just get my let me see I wonder if I just move this to the other window if you see it that way let me see I'm sorry, I hear, I'm hearing an echo, so I must I must have this open twice or something. Okay. All right. So just um, I see some of the questions in the room. Uh, basically, any of the windows here have these title bars to them that you can turn on and off. So when you left click on the upper left box here, the Windows box, and you have this pop up option to pop it out. And actually, that wasn't the point I was going to make. It's actually right clicking on the title bar that brings up this configuration window. So, in the configuration window, is where you could say no title bar, always on top. And that's what happened with some of these boxes. They have the, uh, the no title bar checked. You see that there? No title bar. So, if I uncheck that and say commit, now it comes back positions. Turn it back off, and now it's off. So that saves you a little bit of room because that's you know quarter inch here, quarter inch there. You know what's in the window because you see the columns and you're familiar with your platform, and you don't need to keep them. But if you want to uh, do that, somebody's telling me the the um, the uh, <laughs> account box. It should do that not if you point to the window itself, but if you point right click to the border of the window, you should get that box. All right, here's account, just to prove to you that's the window we're looking at, the account window. And now that it's on, I can hit no title bar and hit commit. The other thing you saw Craig doing was configuring the columns, which is, again, um, not clicking on the border, but this time clicking on anywhere in the window itself. And now you get this full-fledged full listing with all the different column names that you can add to the left and to the right. Okay, and if if you have any trouble with the specifics of how to use all that, we could talk about that another time. Um, and yeah, there's a little bit of an echo on the line that we're still sorting out. Yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. It's got to be coming from something on your end. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing I can think of is if my um, Skype, for whatever reason, is not connecting cleanly, and uh, it won't be the first time that's happened. But okay. uh, let me see if I double check my uh, my team viewer settings here and I do have everything muted out so oh you know there is an, one more spot I can look it's my mixer and yeah no that's not doubling back out 
if I turn off my audio, can you hear me okay? Okay. And all right, so I turn off one of the feedings here, but it's not where it's coming from, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and of course, our tech guru RPM is uh, camping in the middle of the wilderness, so not able to ask him live as we usually are able I to think, do. Yeah, the echo's gone now. No, nope, I'll come back. <laughs> oh, you know what? Then <laughs> nice I'll, try, buddy. I'm going to put that back on then. If he tells me it uh, went away, I'm going to I'm going to mute the speaker's audio. Which, um, if you can hear me fine, and how about you guys at home? Can you hear me talking? Maybe you could just put a one in the room if you can hear me talking now, ladies and germs. I know there's a little bit of a delay when I talk, and they finally hear it, and I'm getting a one. Okay, so they're hearing me fine, and maybe the echo's gone, and uh, we'll go on from here. So we had a question about the frame window configure box. Well, just any one of these windows... If you right click on the border itself and you get this familiar screen here, no title bar, always on top. These are your two main choices. It also gives you the way to pop out the window, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And then there's a config option here to get to all of the major settings for that particular window. And then the other way to go directly to the config is if you just right click on the window itself, not the border, but the window itself, and then you have config, and there's your same config menu. So play around with that uh, with all of your windows and you'll see all the different op options that are available to you. Um, and and we can talk about that even offline and, and not use up all the show time for that. Alright, so you're showing basically what I just described I think and uh, somebody had a question about the order window box so when you get that far we can m maybe pause there. Okay, and move that up about a quarter inch to fit it on the broadcast window. I know you can't really see, or yeah, can you see the green lines on this, on your screen? Oh, okay, so that's the broadcast window. Just keep everything in there, and we'll be fine. Then uh, I'll do my best to mimic what you were just walking through, which is that this is the montage window, this colorful window here, and there's a lot of information packed into the montage. If you are not familiar with using this montage, I would say stop trading and go read the help manual on how to use this because <laughs> this is basically the the core of your trading, um, um, the core of your trading activity. So what you have here is the uh, stock symbol up in the upper left corner, and you've got your level two trading. This is what the colors are. In fact, I'm just going to change this to to Zynga since it looks like a lot of Zynga trading is going on and maybe you can I don't know if the level twos reflect after hours or not do they usually do that? Oh uh, they do, the uh, ECNs do okay so that could be updating and then uh, and I do see it now changing so down at the bottom here what you saw Craig clicking on that uh, maybe you didn't hear him talking about was the orders so you could place a limit order just changing this option here and then you could stick in a price over here. So we're gonna let's say we want to buy that at uh, 325, not 325. And let's say you want to place an order for a thousand shares. That's what's going in the left side here. What's going in this box here? If I delete the 100, I think it tells you display in very light gray text. So what that's talking about is how many shares to actually show on the market. So you could put an order for a thousand, but only show a hundred shares on the market. And then, uh, if you're going to buy it, you just hit buy, and that places the order. So you see it over here in the in the order window. It hasn't triggered yet, obviously, um, but it shows me an open of a thousand shares at 325. And then down here, you see where it says 325, and only 120 shares are showing. So it's not even showing my full thousand. It's my 100 shares plus somebody else's 20, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then, of course, this is a demo, so I don't even know if it would show the number built in with the demo, too. The other thing he was starting to show was in um, trading a stop order, right? That's the other thing you were doing. So there's the stop, and you can set a price 
Um, where did you go to set the price for the stock order? Because you got to press buy or stop. Buy or short or short. First, you got to put stop in the, in the box. Okay. Press buy or sell. All right. That'll bring up that'll bring up your um, okay. order entry. So now you can pick. Uh, let's say yeah. trailing. Let's say you want to do a sell order. I guess. I guess a buy order trailing stop sounds a little weird. <laughs> All right. So here's a buy order. So let's say we want to trigger this at three twenty five, and then you will place your limit order at three twenty four. Let's say. And now that's set up to go again a thousand shares at a hundred and uh and is it set now it is it is set right because there's another order sitting up here on the position window or the trade correct. window correct okay so uh if you so, guys uh, some of the features on that montage while i while you're on that montage because i'm playing blind over here i really don't know what you have up over there um but i just want to let people know uh the little uh s below if you put up a uh, general electric in your montage um the general little s below the anchor Yes, the anchor is here on the right. The, yeah. And there's a little tiny S here underneath the anchor, and that indicates yes. that there's short shares available. There's short shares available. No, every stock, like I, I want to reiterate this because I, I hear this terminology all the time from people, and they say, well, this is not shortable. Every stock, as long as it has a symbol, is shortable. Every stock. I don't care what it is. It just matters if you find the shares to short that stock. Right. So if it doesn't have that S, does not mean you cannot short that stock. All it means is you have to call in to our trade desk, locate the shares on the street, they will loan us the shares for you to short that stock. Right. So that's a big difference of not being able to short a stock, period. Every stock is shortable. Right. It doesn't matter. As long as it's got a symbol, you can short it. You just got to be able to go out there and locate or you know, get the shares hypothecated to you to short the securities. Okay. Look, even Zynga's uh, shortable. Every stock is shortable. Just got to go out and find some shares. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, so um, that's the difference. That's an easy to short list. You can go ahead and short it all day long. You don't got to call in. You don't got to find a locate. Go nuts. Short as many as you want, as much as you want. If it doesn't have that S, doesn't mean you cannot short it. A lot of people get that misconstrued like, oh, it's on no S there. I can't short it. Yes, you can. Just got to get a hold of us and tell us how many shares you want. We'll go out there and see if we can find you, find you some stock from another broker dealer to short it. Right. That, that was the thing I was going to mention. I remember you talked about that on the last show was that if, if let's say, something's going on in the news and you want to get into a particular uh, stock the next day, then give a call to Craig or, or one of his guys and, and uh, tell him what you're trying to do. Um, and if it's not a stock that's already in the system, they, they'll try to find some for you. Uh, I have a short list that I use uh, weekly um, that I, if, uh, if a stock hits my price target, uh, that I do every morning. That if I, if I need to locate a security, I do it at 8 o'clock in the morning or 8.30 in the morning. I make sure I got that stock before I even think about shorting it. Good. And I, even if I don't use it, I still have it to where I can use it if I need it. Right. So even if you got something on your list, and you might think you might want to do 1,000 shares of it, call up in the morning, get 1,000 shares, let them save it for you. Okay. You know, it's a thing to do. Right, right. Okay. Now, there's nothing, worse, there's nothing worse about trying to short a stock that you can't locate a security. I mean, it's just, it's just a, you know, it's just a gut-wrenching feeling when you knew you were right and you just couldn't find any stock. Right. That's like finding out you don't have enough money in your account. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Now, so. I, I was going to mention if um, you want to go over to daytradingradio.com and have that on your screen, you'll at least be able to see what right. um, what we're broadcasting um, okay. Yeah, I'll go in it right now. I had to kill it because I was getting the. That's where I thought I was getting the echo from. But I'll go back in it right now and just. Yeah, I mean, you here. can you can mute that screen when it does come yeah. up. There's an audio button to mute the, the audio. Right. Um, is there anything else on the montage that we want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Let me just uh, get you up here. Um, no. If you want, you can go ahead and pull up a. Uh, you can go ahead and pull up a. Uh, Let's do a um, let's do let's do the uh, the, the um, order settings for that montage. Go up to setup. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, trading settings. Up on top, trading settings there. Yep. Now what this will do basically is uh, you see a little box up on top, enable or send order confirm. Right. Right. If you click that and press OK, what that'll do from this point on is basically put an extra set of eyes on your order. I've known, I've been in this business for almost 17 years, and there's times where I wanted to buy 1,000 shares, and I actually definitely bought 10,000, mm. or I didn't buy enough. What that, or I sent order comp from, was instead of putting an uh, extra set of eyes on it for you. If you want to buy 1,000 shares of Microsoft at $23, it will come up with a conference box asking you, 
buy a thousand shares of Microsoft at twenty three dollars with a question mark, press yes, then the order goes out to the open market. So right. it's basically a nice thing, especially if you got uh, if you're playing with hotkeys or anything like that. It's a nice way to get a double confirm to ask if to ask or repeat if you really want that order sent out to the open market, whether it's a buy or sell. So that's definitely a thing that I encourage anybody anybody to do with with their if they're using this uh, this Trader Pro. It alleviates error. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, this, this is uh, tough enough to do in the open market, let alone with trader error. And the less trader error you have, you know, the, the more successful you'll be in putting your orders in correctly. Right. And when you get more familiar with the platform and you, and you feel ready to go, you can always turn that off and uh, not sweat it out. So here's Absolutely. what you would see. I, I, had, I did it a couple times while you were talking, and uh, you guys can see how that works. Correct. Now, someone's Correct. asking. Now, you, yep. Uh-huh. Go so, ahead. Someone's asking about setting. Uh, Minimum order sizes. Minimum order sizes. Well, basically, that'll go to a default. Okay, what you want to do is X out of that, get out of that box, go up to uh, settings or setup, and go to um, order template. Okay. So here's order template, and there's now, your default you can, order. That's a global default order configuration. What that basically means, in a nutshell, is um, you see where it says exchange, it's got NASDAQ in there. Right. If you put your sort of drop down, it'll pull up every exchange basically that's traded. Um, you know, okay. basically New York, over the counters, whatever. You can go ahead and default this to. If you're Nasdaq stock and you're a hundred share trader, you can go ahead and put a hundred shares in the default order. Um, you always want to use a limit price or a market price. That's up to you. Um, all or none or any are good till cancel or all or none or any. Basically, you want any. I mean, you're not going to really use uh, many all or nones on a default. Mm -hmm. um, day plus, if you want day orders, if you want every order going out good till cancel, um, you can. Put that on there as well, or if you just want them out there for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, and they automatically kill, you can do that. But every exchange that you have, you can use defaults on for your minimum shares. So if you're a NASDAQ trader and you only trade 100 shares of NASDAQ, you can go ahead and NASDAQ, and every NASDAQ stock you pull up on your montage will come on as a default for 100 shares inside your uh, quantity box. Okay. If you go ahead and switch that now to the over-the-counter bulletin board, um, pink sheet stocks, if you're a pink sheet stock trader and you want to trade penny stocks and you want to at least have 10,000 shares to buy, you can go ahead and set that default up in that market. So where every stock you pull up on the pink sheet will come up with 10,000 shares in your order box. So you could go ahead and basically, you know, whatever market you trade, you can go ahead and default whatever size you want, whichever you're comfortable with. New York Stock Exchange stock, if you like to trade 500 shares on the New York, 300 shares on the NASDAQ, on the, on the, you know, on the, on the, the macros or whatever. I mean, it'll, it'll give you some options of just to default your, your minimum to, uh, tier size that you want to do. This will alleviate you going ahead and wasting time and putting every time you make an order. Right. You know, Okay, so hopefully you guys saw how that was done. Pretty basic there in, under setup and then order templates. And then you can set different ranges for each of the markets. Obviously, if you're trading futures and you don't want to have it in 1,000 contract increments, you can set that up for, for uh, one, contr for one right. contract if you need to. Just right. Now, what you do with inside the montage, um, yeah. in the, in the montage, you see what level two is. If you want to right-click within that body... Of the montage? Yes, right click. No, inside the montage. Yep, go right click. Okay, yeah, right there. Level two config. Okay. If you go to two config. Yep. You can also go ahead and take some of the stuff that you may not want to see inside that montage out as well. As you see on the column. Right. Flag. Um, you can also, if you want to see four decimals out, three decimals out, two decimals out, and save some, save, uh, you know, just say just save some fonts in there. You can go ahead and set that up right there where it says price format, three decimals. Yep. You can open that up and put four decimals if you're trading penny stocks as well. Um, in a group color size, if you want to go ahead and just look at two tiers where, you know, I mean, these montages sometimes can get bright with the yellow, the green, the blue, the red, the blue. You can go ahead and just make those all basically one color or two colors if you just want to see the inside bidder ask. Like like I have the inside, which all I care about is the best bid, bid offer. I have those uh, highlighted uh, yellow and the rest are all green. Mm -hmm. So design that the way you want it to. You can put the article book in there. You can change the background color, the text, or whatever it says. So that'll that'll be that. Then you put load as default, set as default, and that'll come up like that all the time as well. Okay. You could do that for. And so if you you know if you wanted to have a different um, different default for each montage box, you can do it. Very good. And and you notice it says color grouping. So there's zero here, and I assume you can set different groupings for different purposes and. Correct. And have them linked uh, separately. Correct. Um. 
looking back at some of the questions. I think we're keeping up with the questions as they're coming in. If you guys have a question that I've missed, um, it seems like I got to the last one here from Famous Designer. So if there's one I missed before that, let me know. Uh, but here you can see all your different controls for the level twos, setting your columns if you want to add them in or or uh, reduce what you're looking at. And here's highlight the whole row. Um, what are the monitor groups? The MMIDs. The monitor groups are. Let me go back into my left. I was looking at uh, famous designer's question. She's got a actually uh, famous. Did you get that? Because I know you. We talked earlier in the week when you had your. Um, your platform up that you wanted to get that. Did you get the default to limit order set? Uh, okay. Or do I need to show it to go over it again? I don't know if she's still here. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure she's got it. Wondering how Wondering I get the montage and inet tabs if I don't see it now. Montage and inet tabs. Well, yeah. you've got a demo, right? Yeah, this you has get, two, ta two tabs on here. That's the internet. That's the inet book. I don't have it on mine. You got, what, that's uh, the ECM book. Um, famous. If you want to sign up for the ECM book, you'll get it. Um, you don't. <laughs> you don't really need it unless you're. You know, it's basically an institutional thing where a lot of the uh, ECM will want to see the depth in the ECM books, like the INET, the ARCA, EDGEX, BADX. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's. If you, I don't know what you got set up or what the, what data you you got set up for. Okay. But that, that's just. You got to understand. That's just a demo that that you have as well. Yeah. I don't even understand what all this stuff is. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, not level three, right? No. Okay. No. Interesting. This this all scrolls down. Oh this, my goodness. Yeah, this is all level two. I mean, if you wanted to go like uh, a single book or anything like that, you got to sign up for Erica Book and things like that to see all the market depth. I don't know. To me, I don't. I don't really. You know, I I play liquid stocks. I just care about the inside myself. But those things do come in handy if you did play in a liquid stock. Is why they're there. If you had a stock trading forty thousand shares a day. And you're a paper holder of fifty thousand shares, and you want to see kind of where some bids are down, or just in case for some security level. Yeah. That's what it's basically predicated for. There you go. Yeah. So. And hey, no. we do we do have members here that trade, you know, hedge funds. So. Who, oh, absolutely. Who knows absolutely. what they what if they want to have it? Then I'm sure they already do have it. So. Yeah, they, if you're trading, if you're trading a hedge fund, I mean, you're getting some, you know, you could probably got some some speculative things out there where you got some size and paper in there, and you you know, those are the kind of books that you kind of need because you need to know where every piece of liquidity is, where every better offer level is, where there's resistance and where there's support, and yeah, things like that. When you're trading a liquid securities, but if you're trading a stock that's doing, you know, 98 million shares a day, I don't think you got to worry about anything but the you know the best bid, best offer. Best offer. Right. That's how you know. Okay. All right. So you were anything else you wanted to point out in the level two config, or that's basically uh, that's that's basically unless someone else has any questions about the level two config out there. I mean, you have other options in here for setting the uh, level two tiers. Um, you can set hide market makers here if you're just you know for whatever stock you're trading. If there's just too many listed here that you want to just focus on a couple, you could do that. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can do with this thing. I mean, you could. The more you play with this thing, the more you find out how much, how really fine-tuned you can get this. I mean, uh, um, it really is. I mean, this thing could really, uh, you know, to be honest with you, the, for the most part, I mean, you know, you know, you, if you're just a, if you're just a day trader, you probably won't need most of these features. But it's nice to have. I mean, you know, not trading really much size to go ahead and have a less flicker or face paint, on, fa um, fast paint on or anything like that. But you right. never know. You know, yeah, I mean, it's good to have. But you can set your tier levels, like I'm saying, to over 100. Or if you want INET showing 100, ARCA 5, you know, things like that. So it, it's nice. You can get it the way you want it. You can basically dress this thing up, how, no matter how small or big you are, you can dress it up to the way you want it, right. which is really, I mean, it's user-friendly, very user-friendly is what I like about it. So we had a question about this TMP button. Which TMP button are you talking it's about? It's on the montage, and when I click on it, it says default order. So what it seems to do is if I were to change my order size and change this to, uh, let's say, a, a market order, change this to good to cancel, and I started playing around with some of the other settings, and then I decided I'm not going to take the trade for whatever reason, it looks like I can hit the TMP button, and it resets everything back to the default order. Yeah, I think it's basically like a uh, TMP, I think it's just for uh, uh, our t order template. I believe. Okay, sure, that makes sense. And it goes right back and defaults to whatever you default you got set up for that market. Now, if you got a pink sheet stock in there, it'll default to whatever you set up for the pink sheet stock. Right, right. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's. A, I don't even know. I don't even trade pink sheets. I mean, what's a what's a pink sheet stock? Uh, 
I was going to say Zynga. <laughs> well, it's getting there. <laughs> Give us some time. <laughs> no, but if you, yeah, but that's that's what it'll do. Right. And um, the uh, the little the little question mark next to it. I'm not even sure what that little question mark even does. To be honest with you. Oh, this little uh, question mark. Yeah, I have never used it. I've heard about what it does, but I just don't recall what it is. And of course, the lock is to lock your lock your level one, lock lock your level two. Yeah, I think I got it. The uh, question mark seems to work the way a Windows question mark does in some of the old software. Um, when you click it once, it turns it on, and then my mouse now has a little tiny question mark next to it. Oh, it shows you what it is, basically. So okay. what I can then do is pick something, like let's say the short button, click it, and instead of it actually triggering a short order. Um, and it didn't work for that one, but it did work for <laughs> the uh, limit order here. If I clicked into the limit box, and there it tells me control info, select the route for this order. The last letter is the route. In the route is the order type. L is limit, M is market, et cetera. Okay, et cetera. so it's like a little little handy user guide. Yeah. Uh, going into the order, yeah. Yeah. Okay. See, I learn something new every day on this thing. I never really used it only because I do what these kind of these acronyms were, were. I mean, if you go to limit where it's got limit and you push your cursor over, over that uh, we're above short, it shows you all the routes. Above short. Yeah, right there. You got it. Hit it again. The little drop down arrow. Oh yeah, I did that. You, you had you had it. Yeah. I mean that that, that I mean to just to explain to the people what it is is those uh, those are ECNs and the, the L stands for limit and the L stands for market. So whatever order you want to route to, JPCC is J, JP Morgan limit, JPCCM is JP Morgan market. Um, if you want to use the ECN after market for post and pre market trading, EdgeX limit, EdgeX market. Of course, EdgeX market will only be used during the day because when the market's closed, there is no market, so you have to use limit orders. Right. Um, so that does that. That's what those stand for, just so everybody knows. Okay, and now you're you're talking about um, the, the ones I'm seeing on the screen are not the J.P. Morgan, et cetera, et cetera. So, is that because the market's closed for them? Uh, the, well, the ones the that I got a different stock in there. Let me you guys in there. No, but that's they're they're there. I mean, J.P. You don't get J.P.C.C. in your. Yeah, uh, I'm not seeing it there. Okay, that could be just a demo showing you just some of the some of the. Some of the routes, not the exact routes, but if you had a live version, you would see um, probably up to 20, 20 different um, market centers you can route your mar orders to. Okay. Yeah. So um, now let's talk a little bit about ECN since we're on the subject. Um, ECN mm -hmm. rebates in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, some traders out there uh, don't even know what that is. So this is the market paying you to trade. How does that work? Uh yeah, basically, uh, if you if you're if you're not set up for ECM rebates, you're trading through your broker. You should request that most of them won't let you, only because they want to keep the money <laughs> off right. your trading, but they do want to charge you when you do <laughs> when you take out liquidity. Right. So most most times you do. We are we are one of the firms out there that if you do request that you want ECM rebates, we do set them up. Now an ECM rebate basically is the same thing as an ECN fee. If you take liquidity out of the market through any ECN, uh, I'll just use Arca for an example. And you go ahead and take liquidity out of the market. What I mean by take liquidity, liquidity is if you hit a bid or you take an offer and you're taking stock out of the market, marketable stock out of the market, they're going to charge you what you call an ECN fee. Some range from spot zero zero four a share um, up to spot zero zero seven five a share on taking liquidity out of the market. Basically keeps their book a little bit more balanced. Now, if you're adding liquidity, they will also compensate you because they want to keep their markets liquid. They don't want to kind of... Uh, have everybody banging these um, these market orders on ECN is why they do it. Right. So basically, if you use a limit order and you're adding liquidity, they will also compensate you. So if you got a 333 offer on ARCA, on the Zynga that you're looking at right now mm -hmm. for 10,000 shares, they will credit your account the ECN rebate. Um, rebate trading it, it was real big in the 90s and the early 2000s. A lot of the guys would sit on Siri when it was very, very liquid, when it was $6 a share and do a lot of rebate. It's called rebate trading. And all they would do was sit on the bid and offer in different tiers and different levels and take the rebates and, and get the credits for the rebates. So as you as you add uh, market liquidity to these to these stocks, the ECNs um, credit your account. We also do have ECN rebates or credits where if you do get, add I think it's it's not as much as the as the as, the, as taking um, taking the stock out. I mean, I think they charge you spot zero zero four on an ARCA if you're taking liquidity. If you're adding liquidity, I think it's spot zero zero one five. But it is a credit, right. and any credit any credit helps. 
Yeah. Um, so, so you know, if you if you're not getting set up with ECN ECN credits and you're only getting ECN uh, debits, it's kind of a one way street. But the broker dealers are keeping those ECN fees. I promise you that. Right. And, okay, and that's you're going to see that when you see trade um, commission fees that are basically rounded off. You know, unlimited shares for X amount of dollars, or up to ten thousand shares for X amount of dollars. That's because they're counting on uh, keeping all those credits for themselves and not passing it along to you. So you get you get an account with somebody like Speed Trader here, and you're going to be able to take advantage of those credits. And you already have a customer here asking to make sure that she's set up for it. So maybe you can. Uh, Speed Trader, uh, if you request, I believe it's I believe on the new account form it does say. Uh, ECN rebates. I, I, if if you haven't, I could check for you uh, in the morning. If you just give me a just give me a flag, and I'll I'll definitely double check or anybody's account who wants to be double check. And if they are not set up, we will get you set up. Okay. And now there's some information we can pass on regarding that. Now, um, what it means is if you want to place your orders and have it routed to a specific ECN, um, which option would you pick to do that? Is that the drop down here? Um, basically, I mean, all ECNs will will have a rebate. I mean, as long as an ECN is charging you, they're going to rebate you. I mean, I, you know, the fees vary from each ECN. Okay. Um, but like uh, like I'm saying, you know, you can if it depends on what market's more liquid. I mean, if you, different stocks have different kind of markets. I know INET, ARCA, BAT, and EDGEX are the most most commonly used. All right. Now, if yeah. you if you use any one of those four and you add liquidity at some in some in some uh, capacity, they're going to give you the rebate. How much it is? Um, there is a list, I believe. Um, I, I think it's posted on our site. I'm not too sure if the. I know the debits are posted on our site. I don't know if the credits are, but we can get a list of credits for ECN ECN rebates as well. Yeah. Uh, but any ECN, I mean any ECN should be should be giving you credits. I mean it's it's that's what they do. They charge you debits. You got to understand it's an electronic market. They're going to charge you debits if you're taking liquidity, but they're also going to give you some credit if you uh, you add liquidity. It's not there's no human intervention. Right. So. Every ECN will will give you a credit as long as they're debiting you. They're going to have to credit you in some capacity. Right, and um, and so here's where you can go into the order templates, and when you're placing the order, here's the hundred shares. Here's the limit routing. You can change the limit routing to an actual ECN. So if you want to pick, for example, Arca L for the limit, and it'll hit apply. Uh, and then we're going to reset the, the uh, default here to the template. And now you see Arca Limit is here. So that's the way for you to place your default orders to a specific ECN and take advantage of any kind of uh, rebates that would be available at that time. Um, sure. And remember, you're going to want to change this to a market order if if something's going on and, and you're trying to get in and the market's getting away from you or whatever, whatever your strategy is. But um, th that's a way to lock yourself in. Uh, and you could find out what those rebates are. I don't know if the rebates change from one exchange to the other, or they do. They you know, and, and they they do for the most part. The you know, uh, Arca and Inet kind of kind of stay uh, stable throughout the year. Sometimes, sometimes they get more, sometimes they get less. But they you know, they they they're pretty much they're pretty much you know anywhere between. I'd have to say, I think the lowest one is spot zero zero one five, and that's Arca. And I think Adjex goes up to spot zero zero three. Okay, I believe I could find out. So if if you're trading, let's say, ten thousand shares a week, then mm -hmm. and you want to get yourself set up with this as a default, you should probably be fine going forward. If you're trading, sure. you know, upwards of a hundred thousand shares a month, let's say, then you're going to want to stay on top of the notices, and you could talk to Craig about finding out where those notices are, so that when the rates do change, you can take advantage of the exact. Yeah, that uh, the bigger blocks you're trading, the most, the, 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 you know, for for the most part, the, the more you want to use ECNs, especially get, especially grabbing that, uh, grabbing those extra credits out of the market. I mean, if you're a limited or, limit order trader, I mean, there's no reason not to grab those extra credits because they could be substantial. I mean, like I said, back in the '90s and early 2000s, when Siri was a, um, I think it was between six and eight dollars stock. There was nothing but but credit traders on that stock. I mean, I, I knew a whole room down in South Florida who did nothing but trade Siri just for credits. Yeah. I mean, it was. It, Unbelievable, and the money—it was big, big business. It wasn't small business. They were trading 100,000 shares, uh, you know, hundreds of times a day, in and out, just getting credits. Right. I mean, it was pretty insane. And some of those guys were making a lot of money doing credit trading. So it's definitely out there. I mean, you just got to make sure that your broker's offering it to you. Right. Okay. You know? Now, uh, barring any other questions coming through here, as I'm trying to see. 
uh, famous designer said she was losing the answer there, losing the audio, but it sounds like it eventually yeah, came through. Got it. Okay. So, what, what do you think we should show next? It's uh, it's up to you. Let's show you. Uh, you can show some. Uh, oh, let's see here. What would be good for the traders to go ahead and show? Uh, I don't know. Um, do you want to show? I'll look at a chart. Options, the chart, doesn't matter, whatever you want to do. All right, yep. Here, here's a chart. Okay. And maybe we can demonstrate how this anchor works. Anchor, okay. Drag, drag that anchor over inside the body of the chart. All right, left so click the anchor. left click the anchor, and you see it pops up a little shortcut thing shows up on the screen. I'm just going to move that over to the chart, and it stays with the little shortcut reference. When I let go, the chart gets populated. Correct. And that's how you basically anchor. You can anchor and connect the charts and the time and sales as many times as you want. You can open up 20 montages, 20 charts, 20 time and sales, and have different stocks pop up. If you want to go up to um, quotes up on top and open a time and sales and link that as well, you can show everybody what I mean. Okay, so here's time and sales. Quotes on top, so you don't go up on quotes. And there, I'm, yeah, I already did it. And now, okay, yeah. All right. So here's uh, time and sales for Zynga. It's after hours, obviously, and you can see the shares coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you can also notice the different exchanges that they're being uh, traded on. There's a couple ARCAs going through here after hours um, as we have this run up. And now this is a one-minute chart. If I popped another chart window here, obviously when you do this the first time, you're going to have to resize everything for your monitors but just to give you a sense how it works there's Zynga and I'll change this one to a five minute so now I've got one minute up here five minute down here and if for whatever reason I change Zynga back to GE both of my charts change back to GE as well as my time and sales over to GE correct correct and uh, basically I think there's uh, just Winset so if you select an ECN rebate the possible ECN might not have the price limit of, co of course uh, just when if you if you're out there trading and you want to just be in the liquid part of the market, the inside bid and the inside offer is the best way to trade. There's no doubt about it. I'm getting that ECN trading is if you're if you're in the liquid market where uh, Arca and INET are very liquid inside markets. They're usually on the inside with the Nasdaq or whatever the case is on a um, on a very liquid stock. Most of the times they are going to be. Um, you should be able to get fills within the Arca book anyhow. But it, can you miss a trade? Sure, you can. But you can miss a trade anywhere. You can miss a trade even on the Nasdaq. Yeah. And uh, and w we talked about shortcuts. You can set up keyboard shortcuts to do some of these trading. Yes, that it was. That you can go up and uh, I don't know how I'd be able to show you. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not show it right now. But I just wanted to right. put yes, it out there can, for just go, win. I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you right now. Go up to setup. Okay. You go up to hotkey. Hotkey. Press hotkey. Yep. And you can go ahead, and that'll give you a first idea of how you can set up your hotkeys. Right. And here's what I was getting at. So you got ARCA sell, in-car sell, and brute R sell versus, and there's buys down below. So you can actually set exchanges linked to specific keys. And therefore, if you put an, a, a bid out there for ARCA and it's not taking, you can cancel it and switch it to a, a you know, a NASDAQ generic. Correct. Or best route. I guess that's what the, BR, the brute is, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So you could change it to a, a best route right away if you're not getting... Uh, hit on your trade so. yes that's that's exactly that's that hockey configurational that's how you configure your hockeys it takes a little bit a little more than just uh i mean to show to show and set it up it takes a little bit a little bit to show but it's not too bad mm -hmm. not too bad but you could definitely shave from hockeys if that's your thing yeah yeah i did that for a while with uh, another platform and uh you know set up a certain grouping of the keys to have you know, buys on the left, sells on the right. Much, right, <laughs> right. You know, something along those lines. Have different keys for the different... Uh, well, I didn't have different exchanges. I just had one exchange for the default. And then if it wasn't getting hit for whatever reason, I could switch it, cancel it and switch it to uh, uh, best route. Okay. And get it to execute. How about we show them uh, really quick how to set up maybe a, an alert or a trigger? Okay. So do that. Good. Um, so you go up to tools up on top of your title bar. Yep. And there you see um, alert and, alert and trigger. Yep, it's the first one on the list. Mm-hmm. 
And then you just go ahead and basically left click twice inside the alert and trigger box. Okay. So I double click twice in the in mm -hmm. the trigger box. I get a pop up box here. I could set a name. Mm -hmm. Set okay. a name to it. Just call it the uh, I don't know Bright Eye GE. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever the case is. Sure. Or you know, put the symbol next to it. Um, okay. General Electric. Put Bright Eye and then General Electric. Got it. And um, then you go ahead and basically let me just put mine here as I'm trying to walk with you here and do them at the same time, but I'm a little behind. And then you basically go ahead and add. Okay. And now I've got item. the rule setting here, and I could pick an uh, item. Yep. So i got level one. Yeah, you go to level one if you want last sale hitting a certain price or right. whatever. You know, you put last sale, and we'll put equal to, uh, I don't know, maybe, what's, gee, I don't know, $23 or something uh, to that nature. Okay. Put 23 bucks in there. Okay. And you press OK. And then it, uh, you'll see it pop up in your screen. So it's there. There it's there, and you I can go ahead and name as many as you like. Um, put in the money as you want in there. Uh, wherever, say, if you want the sound on, press OK. You're talking about the bottom? Yeah. OK. You see where it says OK in the bottom there? Yep, yep, yep. And then you see it, uh, it'll go ahead and press OK. It'll pop up, and you got a trigger out there for General Electric. So you could put as many alerts in there as you want. Um, you can go ahead and uh, edit them if you like, just by right-clicking on that. If you right click on that um, on that alert. Okay. Give me one second because my mouse just decided to cut out on me. Okay. I'm just gonna reset it here. Seems like once once I logged into the uh, <laughs> the chart and that little window popped up on the chart, it uh, froze me out for a sec. There we go. So you said to right click anywhere in the. Uh I'll right click on the uh, alarm, the alert. On the alert it. itself, okay. Yep. The, oh, yeah, that, that alarm anywhere on there. Just uh, edit. Edit. Takes and you go ahead and just go ahead and edit for wherever you want. If you want to change the order, if you want to make it a different, if you want to make the last price breaking news, if you want breaking news on it, you can do it like that where it beeps if breaking news comes out on it. Or if you get your order filled, you can put order fill out there. Um, if you have an open order out there and you want to know when it's done, um, you want to go in the other room and do whatever the case is. You can put it on order fill, and when that order gets filled, it'll beep. It'll it'll send off a nice annoying ding until you stop and come over and turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah, but you can have as many of those up there as you want to as well. So uh, that's another nice feature. You can basically just get rid of them by just right-clicking on it and put delete, and it'll get rid of that alert, and you can start over and put another one up there. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's, that's that simple. Now, this listing of my alerts, it looks like it's... Um it's tied to the symbol, right? Correct. Because it looks like in this case, I actually set up three different items here, and they're all tied together. Correct. Um, so that's kind of nice. And um, I guess there's no breaking news on... Let me change nope. this to... Uh, you can put order fill in there as well if you want to get... If you got an order out there and you want breaking news on it, if, you know, by any chance, breaking news comes on it before your order is even filled, um, you know, whatever, what it's, whatever you want it to do. Um, there's no really, there's no really, it's, it's whatever alert you want. Okay. And let's see, we can. And it's loud. <laughs> oh, so you'll, <laughs> you'll know when you bought stock, I okay. tell you. All right. Minimize that out of the way. So I don't know if anybody had any more questions about the alerts, but that's how that basically works. Yeah. Um, let's see, turn I got, you know, if you want to, um, let me see here. What else we got here? It's for. Uh, I see Alatuma lady is asking about how to enter a target and a stop for an order. Oh, he's, okay. Uh, a target. Target. You would well. A target. You would need an alert to, to have a target. I don't know what you kind of mean by target, but we just did a stop. But we can walk through it again, if you want to walk. Through, I'll just put a stop order out there. Okay. So here's GE, and uh, let's say we owned a hundred shares. I'll drop this down to 100 shares, and we want to do a stop order. So what you do is, instead of looking for the options here, they're not going to be listed until you actually click the short button. Um, I'm saying short, but it'd be selling it. I don't know. If you're, if you're if you're long the stock, it'll say it'll turn red. It'll change to saying sell instead of short. So, yeah. yeah. As soon as you're open market, as soon as you're long the stock, they short will no longer say short. It'll say sell. Okay. And then now you set your order type. 
so let's say it was a trailing order. Um, forget I said trailing order. Just keep it at limit. So trigger price would be when it actually, let's say you put a stop in at uh, $23.20. And then you want to put in a sell order at uh, $23.20. And let's say 25 cents. You want to come back to you. Mm -hmm. And then I still have the confirmation set up, so give me a little confirmation warning. And then I'm going to say uh, yes to that. And now you see that on my order list here, it's red because it's a it's a sell order, so it's showing up as as red. Now Sunny's saying she thought maybe she's talking about a bracketed order. Maybe like a range order. What she's doing is. Um Probably like an order canceled. Although this, that's what you with that's on our system is called a range order. If you go to the same feature and you okay. go um, under, if you put a buy stop in or a sell stop, if you put stop to go short, which is a sell order type, would be a range order. Okay, so here's okay. order type range order. There we go. Yep. And we can hit a low pr low price and a high price and a high price. Correct. So if it hits the low price, it sells. Yep. If it hits the high price, it sells. Correct. It's a, it's a bracket order. It's basically a bracket order. I okay. mean, it's just one of can order order cancels other whatever you want to call it. Right, right, right. So let me hit uh, like twenty three twenty and twenty three twenty four, and there it's giving me the question again. And uh, hopefully that answered the question. I think it did. Yeah, it's a bracket order. Yep. Okay. So this is when you get the. Um, different types of terminology from different brokers so obviously this one you're looking at the word range okay correct. yeah correct. Um, now I'm sure at your house I did see a couple of questions come through here but I didn't know that you were directing those um, here at Craig He's, he was asking questions about I thought broker codes or something is there any do you know what he was Bro talking about MPIDs? Is that who, who's who's saying that? What, I'm, or what, I'm sure at your what, house. I'm scrolling back to the. Questions. Okay, what's he say? What's he saying about the uh, bro broker codes? MPIDs, correct? Uh, let's see. Is it possible to trade through Bloomberg with a broker code? Oh yeah. So you know what it is, but we don't. You know what? Uh, what he's talking about is basically just using a broker code like Stock USA in a Bloomberg drop down, where it's where it basically routes the order. Stock USA is the broker dealer through Bloomberg to execute orders through Bloomberg. Yes, we do have that. But right now, uh, we're in the process of probably uh, switching clearing arrangements um, short the house. So, you know, I don't know if the new house is going to have. It's basically an algo system, is what, they, as you know, what you use. Um, they execute orders through Bloomberg via our MPID, and it gets kicked back to the client. Uh, we do have that. We're Now we're using, um, I believe it was uh, God, Credit Suisse versus Boston CFSBs, but I think we're switching to a different custodian soon. So I don't know who we'll be using. But, yeah, it's possible. Correct, it's possible. Okay. So that's interesting. I never I haven't heard of that, but then again I don't use the Bloomberg platform, so yep. um and uh just to go back to famous designer asking about the range. So what we're talking about is here's the montage mm -hmm. and it, it would be considered a stop order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um it's not a limit order, right? It'd be a stop order. And then when you hit the buy or sell button, depending on what side of the trade you're going to be on you get this mm -hmm. pop-up and then now here famous designer is where you would choose order type of range and then you get to place your high and low bracket price uh ranges for it to trigger hopefully that answers the question uh i'm short sure your house has another question about collateral yeah it depends short the house i mean you know if you want to uh you know, if you want to talk, discuss institutional stuff with me, I'd be more than glad to do it. I mean, if you want to email me at Craig at stockusa.com, um, I don't want to construe that side of the business from what I'm trying to show these guys. Uh, I, I definitely know what you're talking about. I definitely take you out. Um, I, it doesn't mean it's collateral. I mean, you could, you know, we'll we'll work out something with you guys if you want to do some. I believe you. I believe what you're getting at is you want uh, algo trading. Is that correct? Through little... Bloomberg. Through Bloomberg, through, uh, using our MPID SUSA. Okay, yeah, I could. I'll, I'll, I'll talk with you more about that if you want to email me at Craig at StockUSA.com, and I can get more in depth and let you know what our parameters and institutional side is. But we could definitely, I could definitely take care of that for you as well. All right, Kenny, I'll get you that um, that email address after yeah. the, after the show. Okay. Yeah. Uh, getting back to famous designer, she's asking about you put in the stop order, mm -hmm. and um, then you get to this pop up. 
is Correct. what you do. So, you, in other words, you put in the stop order here, you set your number of shares, and then you have to click on either the sell side or the buy side. And that will give you this new pop-up window where you get to pick range. Okay? And there's uh, J-Dub sharing that email address for you on Short Your House. Awesome. Okay, great. Okay. And uh, Famous Designer... Um, you're saying the buy and sell buttons are not popping up. I don't know. Do you have a number <laughs> of shares entered in? And I don't know if it's maybe it's a stock you have on the screen that's not tradable after hours. I, well, uh, does she mean the, the buy the the buy or sells buttons are not popping up on what uh, the buy or sells the buy or sells buttons are on the montage. They 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 don't pop up anywhere. They're light gray. So maybe it's a maybe it's a stock that you're not allowed to trade after hours. What stock is she in? Maybe you could try something like GE. She says she's confirming she has 100 shares, and she is using GE. Okay. So I don't have a live platform, obviously. I can't figure Hold out. Hold the symbol. Did you press enter? Did you press enter? <laughs> when you put the symbol in? <laughs> I'm assuming it gives you a last price, at least, in your level one. Uh -huh. uh, is your level one filled in the way mine is? Well, no. Is the buyer is the buy button green and the short button or the sell button red? That's what I want to know. She's saying it's grayed out. <laughs> uh, uh, your platform has been shut down. Famous <laughs> your platform is shut down and exiled out of the trading community. Um, no, it, I, I've I don't know why I would, I've never seen the gray button in my life on this system in, in, in any capacity. Hmm. So. They're not colorized. <laughs> log out and log back in, famous designer. Do me a favor, because I've never in my life. I mean, it's, and, it, and it can't be isolated. Because if I if, if it's gray on your side, it has to be gray on my side. These yeah. are coming off the same servers, the same code servers, the same blade servers that we pay a ton of money for down in Jersey City. So whatever information you should be getting, I should be getting. Unless you change the defaults and made it gray. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, she's going to try to log out, log back in. I just, yeah, because I, that, that, those buy buttons and sell buttons are should be always pink, red, and green, and the cancel replaces are definitely yellow. Yeah. Well, I'm not getting executed on any of these orders I place. I'm very disappointed. Yeah. Well, this helps if you have if you had a market open. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've actually had a guy who took the demo, and actually made money on it. On one of his trades, he made like twenty six hundred dollars, and he called their firm and he wanted the cash because he thought he was live. <laughs> I swear, true story. Oh boy, true, true story. And I, you know, I just basically had to tell him, sir. I mean, I don't want to say this. How can I say this nicely? The you know, the platform is only smart as the using the person using it. Right. And <laughs> if uh, I said if you lost four thousand dollars in that trade, you're going to send us a check. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm sure he didn't reveal the losses. Right. <laughs> right. So that's I, but, I, I, that's the true story. He called up the firm and wanted his money. He says, "Oh, I got to take the money out." He says, "It's just fake money." He couldn't get it through his head that there was a there was a uh, that we gave him a hundred thousand dollars of fake BP. Right. Well, just ask him for his fake bank account, and you'll fake that's wire all. it to him. It's all right. You have fake check along with the fake accounts that you got, and we'll all live in, uh, you know, we'll live in uh, uh, the Willy Wonka world over here. Yeah. Hey, I've so. done some of my best trading on fake accounts. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, I've never met an unsex unsuccessful paper trader. <laughs> uh, never, <laughs> never met one. Although, you know? although I have gone to the trouble of actually having to reset the paper trade account. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh but this is all good. I don't know if she, uh, okay, got it. Is it red? No, is it uh, blue and red, uh, uh, Brenda? Or red and green? Red and green or any kind of, except for gray. It should look just like it does on the screen now yep. with, with this level one grouping. Pink and green. All right, there she goes. Now she's set. All right, sweet, sweet. Now if she puts General Electric in there and she puts her position, it'll turn red, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then you put in the uh, stop order. Yep. And then hit buy, and you should get this pop up. Oh, I had this backwards. So the high price should be. 
like that. And we're getting a yes but. Oh, that's somebody else saying yes but. You have TP, some skin in the game. Some comments about paper trading. Yeah, well, paper trading, I will go back to that. It's just, it takes like, college, you're absolutely right, because anybody could sit there and buy 10,000 shares of Google, and when it goes green, think you mastered the world. But when you got real money behind that thing, you know, and, and, you know what? And that's, that brings up a good point that, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been, a, I've been a prop trader, I've been an institutional trader, um, I did some, some uh, IB for, uh, on the institutional desk, and I had a very large agency desk down in South Florida that I used to run. And the funny thing about that is, you know, one thing that I, that I see some people, do today is uh, like what I call them P&L traders. What I used to do, if this will help anybody out, anytime you got your P&L on your screen, put a piece of black tape over it and don't look at your P&L. You never want to be a P&L trader, ever, mm -hmm. in my eyes, because that takes emotion into play. If you don't see your P&L, it's a different game. You play, you're, you're trading off the trade. You're not trading off the money. And it doesn't, you know, what you want to do is kind of build yourself up to the point where it doesn't matter if you trade one share or 10 shares, 100 shares or 1,000 shares, you shouldn't also be a volume trader. I mean, every trade should have an exit, an entry, or an entry and an exit. It shouldn't matter the amount of the size you got. It should be the trade itself. And when people look at their P&L, they, they, they tend to get uh, the psychology part about it is they're not used to see, they don't like seeing deep red. They don't like seeing money down, but basically they're not playing the trade, they're playing off their P&L. Right. I used to I, I when I was a, when I was a prop trader I was a prop trader for almost eight years and I I the first thing I would do is put a piece of black tape over my P and L every day. Mm -hmm. every, I wouldn't even I wouldn't know how much I lost or made until the end of the day. All right. And just, and if there's a way to turn it off, uh, close the window or whatever, you can do that too, I guess. Just just try to take as much emotions out of it because I'm telling you when you start seeing you seeing these stocks go the other way and you look at your money on an unrealized basis and you're not playing the trade and you do something irrational which I'm sure no one's ever done <laughs> it's like selling the bottom and then buying back on top again three four times a day. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and then and that way it, it doesn't matter. But like you said about your position size, because whether you're trading a hundred shares or a thousand shares, you should have uh, uh, targets and you should have ranges right. and limits and, and all that stuff comes into play. It's a fallacy because if you think about it, it doesn't matter about the size of the stock that you're trading. What people get to tend to do is they can't take the swings of the money that's traded, not so much the, the trade itself. So if you're trading one trade, 10 trades, or 10 shares, 100 shares, 1,000 shares, 10,000 shares, the trade itself is the same. You got your entry, you got your exit. The trade yourself is the same. What people tend to do is they over trade, put too much risk on it that they're not comfortable with. Then they become emotional money traders. They're not stock traders, right? You know, so they make it does it does things that it does things that makes you don't want to do. I mean, you could flip. You could. I'm sure everybody in this room at one point or another, and myself as well, has overtraded due to the fact that we're trading off emotion, hitting the bottoms, buying back on tops, getting back in five times a day when you should. And I mean, that's just basically off a of money trade. I mean, it's trying to get back into the game. I mean, one thing that I've learned in the 17 years I did, it's not the size of the trade, it's not the amount of the trade, it's not the green of the it's, it's the trade itself. Right. Doesn't matter. Trading 100, 100 shares or 10,000 shares, it's the entry point, the exit point on every trade. All right, without seeing any other questions, I'm looking back through notes from the first time that we had you on, and we didn't really get into options. So, is that, uh, I don't know if that's set up in the demo. Are we able to show options like trading? Trade up on uh, quotes, I'm sorry. Go up to quotes. Okay. Option chain. Yep, go up to uh, option chain. Okay. And yeah, go ahead and throw General Electric in there for Brenda. <laughs> okay. Here yeah. Uh, do you get, let's see, I think you got options. Yeah, so you should be able to get throw GE in there. Mm -hmm. So I like this. So here you have the spread of the stock itself, the underlying. Uh, PCL, I guess that's, what is PCL? Close. Yeah. Previous close. Oh, previous close. Volume on the day. Here's your level one info. New and York. obviously you have calls and puts left and right side here. And I and love these tabs. So you can just bounce between all the different contracts. Right, right from this level two. If you click that, okay, go down to the, let's see, where is, uh, go down to the 30, uh, let's go down to the, uh, scroll down in, on the side there and go down to the, let's go to the, I don't know, 23 calls. The, okay. Like the 23 calls. Yep. Okay, if you click on the 23 calls, what's it, the, what is it, the G? Shorten this up a little here. 
the yeah. uh, it's a 14 cent say just double click on the on that call okay so I'm on the left side and I'm just double clicking on the row and when I did that symbol just double click on the symbol yeah and that'll bring, that'll bring up the right at the level two montage below, or it'll take it over to the montage over on the, on the side. You see what did that? And I did see it did that, yeah. Okay, so now that'll trade off a level two. When, when it, you'll get a level two uh, option quote. Wow. It's closed now, of course. That's why you're not seeing it. But, that, you know, it's basically, and you can set your default up to that, too, as well. So Let me see. Is there, uh, yeah, spy trades sometimes after hours. So here's the level twos on... I have to get down to the 150s here. Let's go to 157 and give that a second to populate. Maybe I got to go to April. Uh, I don't know what I did wrong here because it was working before. What the would you do? Well, it's not populating the level twos. Oh, the level two is this. The market's closed. <laughs> it's not going to show any level two because there's no really bids or offers. Oh, on that. I know what it was. I had typed spy, and for that brief moment, I think. Oh, it, okay. uh, I, I got gotcha. you. Because I saw it populate. I was wondering why why it went away. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I see what you mean. But uh, anyway, yeah. I mean, level two quote info, and also you get the charts also update with the option. And uh, I know I've gotten some questions in, in past episodes about whether folks use stochastics on a on an option. And, um, you know, as I've explained, it only works if you have a lot of liquidity in the option itself. So probably like Apple, right? Amazon, so, Google. Use, I mean, things like that. But it'll give you a good on thing. Now, if you don't want to see, if you're just to put like a short the houses in here, I know he likes a short. If you're just a put trader, you could just go ahead and take those calls, that, the calls right off of the. Um, yeah, you don't check it, right? I just don't check it. Yep. And you know? just wipe them all out. I'm only looking at puts now. That's it. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's say now we did have, um, let's take something like uh, May, and we want to look at some sell in May. So we're trading. Is there a center button to just automatically center this, or not really? Uh, what do you mean by uh, describe center? I, uh, I, I, I got to get back in because I got kicked out. Yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, when I first turn it on, I'm at strike 99. and I, I, Oh, no, no, no. You got to scroll up and down. There's no way okay. to. Uh, so there's no. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you from the most, you know, probably from one all the way up. Okay. And obviously, I see a bunch of 154s in here, so you have to get used to the symbols. Um, notice here for SPY, it says SPY 7. Those are the new mini options. Correct. So you have the regular SPY 154s. Here's the SPY minis 154s. Then you've got the SPY, uh, I don't know if this is a, a weekly, maybe. Um let me see I'm here. trying to look at the full name here. Three five. Is that a letter I one five four? That could be. That could be an acronym of I M. It goes by month. Month of expiration. Let me see. Well, I'm in the May month. Let me see. And then this looks like I one. But anyway, it's probably quarterlies and and. Uh, Weeklies. That's that would be my guess. But whatever the case, so you, you click on it. Obviously, the bid ask info is over here. The volume right is there. These are all customizable. So if I right click and go to config, I can get into the full listing here. I can get the high of the day. Um, let's move that over. Low of the day. And if uh, um, don't see the deltas in here, but that's okay. So let me expand my window now I've got the high and low of the trading and when I click on one of them down below is where I should get my delt my uh, Greeks where are my Greeks do I get Greeks or I don't get Greeks should hang on should hang on should hang on should hang on <laughs> What the hell's going on here? Yeah, I don't see any Greeks. But I do see that I can change to one of the other. I could at least look at all the options here together. Um, 
very interesting. Here's the different exchange routings you could do. CBO, and, yeah, C, uh, CBO limit market. Um, right. Yep, and for market, S for what? Best routing or? Uh, CB shorting? Can I, I don't think. I believe it's what's, what do you got? What do you got in there? Spice? Yeah. Oh, I have a lot different other ones. Uh, PS, I got the. Um, PSE, the ASC, the ISC. So that's just that's just the uh, demo server. So that's probably just going to show you the CBOE, uh, C L M L M and S. I believe S is um, what is S? You're listening to Stump the Broker. Yeah, could oh, be sure. No, 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 no. I don't. I'll have to find out what S is on the option chain. All right, I'll have to find out. In the meantime. Now this little window here on the left, um, bid price size, ask price size. I mean the market's mm -hmm. obviously closed, so I know some of these things aren't working the way they normally would. But that'll pop up on inter intermarket data. Basically, give you a level one quote on it, or level. I'm sorry, it'll give you a level two quote on it. Level should. two would be going on yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Good. 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 Yep. So yeah, at this point, just trying to figure out why the Greeks aren't showing up. I know. You know what? They. I know we have them. Unless, um, I just again, don't know the why they're not showing. Closed and they're not. They're not going on now. Which and I don't famous know. famous designers asking us something about. Hang on a second. Did you see that? Hang on. Did she want to go over with scanners? Well, somebody earlier mentioned about scanner. We can get back to that in a minute. Uh, okay. Because it just happened to be on one of the menus when I was clicking on. I got gotcha. you. Tools. So yeah, we could go back and show what that is. Um. I don't know how to get. We'll get the. We'll figure it out. We'll get the Greek center somehow. <laughs> okay. Get them to the Greek. <laughs> All right, so here's again you get in the pop up confirmation buying for seven cents the spy one forty four which I would not recommend buying no <laughs> you should be closer to the money for something like that. buy it just do it with your money, <laughs> but I do like having all the tabs out here, so you can kind of you know flip the you go through well, yeah you go through March or June or January fourteenth or whatever the case is with the expirations and another thing I'm noticing is if you hold down the control key. And click on different uh, different um, options. You can then build yourself a condor or you know strangle, straddle, anything like that, mm -hmm. um, and get to see them all in here. So fully functional platform. So unless we're you got something else you want to bring out with the options, we can go look at that scanner tool. Yeah, let's look at the scanner for Brenda. Okay. And then uh, it is what is that's uh, seven o'clock Eastern time. I guess I should get the hell out of the office in a little while. I think that's a good idea. Considering I got to be back here early in the morning. <laughs> uh, All right. So this popped up again. We got the large font size. Right, that's good. You know what? They, at least you can see it. Go okay. ahead and just go ahead and scroll those out. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that. And if you, by the way, if you get the double arrow here in between columns and you double click, boys and girls. It'll automatically expand it as needed. Okay. And I accidentally hit volume. I do want to do that. Okay. I can't reset it. Let me close it. Maybe go back into it. Okay. So here's scanner. And what do we have to name scanners or create new scanners? Kid. All right. We're hitting add. Give it a name. Scanner type. Looks like you have four choices. So let's do f touching 52 week high and low. Sounds good. As good as any, right? All right. And then you have a high low price filter. So I don't know what that means, but maybe 99%. Is it is it within a hundred? You know, within a range of. I. I can't see your uh, your box. I'm trying to uh, oh, find my, I'm trying less. to find. It's okay. I'm trying to find mine on here. I'm just yep. uh, exchange filter. If you want to choose specific exchanges, we went over that before. Nasdaq, uh, the pink sheets, the NYSE, etc. I'll leave that off, and uh, maybe I'll leave off the high low price filter just for now, and just say commit. And now we have it named, and I'm going to hit the scan button. 
And so here are. There you go. Now let me let me see if I have it's, columns for fifty-two week high and low. It's, uh, I don't see that here. I think there is a low. Uh, is there a year high, year low on there? There's not a year high, year low. There should be no. Just high and low of the day. There's no oh, fifty-two oh, called, week on there. It's called year high. Okay, let me look. Let's see. I just see what it's called. Change from high. What kind of highs and lows you got on there? Change from the high, change from what's the, what is that right there? That's it, just regular high and low. <laughs> okay. Oh, fast computer. I actually have a button to pick fast computer. That's good. I have a, f a fast computer, I think. Yeah. Now, this kind of scanner, is, is this for looking for trades or is this a kind of scanner? No, it's, this is not a trade that's going to be looking for trades for you. I mean, you can put those are what, I mean, you put your alerts and things like that. I mean, it's, uh, it's just a scanner to if you want to um, see if anything hits any kind of level and meet your criteria All right. or something, you know, hitting a day high or day low. I, you know, there's a lot of things you can filter on it to modify it, whatever the case is, but it's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a buy or sell program, no. Right. Well, I didn't mean that, but I mean there, there's complex scanning software that will look for, you know, candlestick uh, yeah, no, it's hammers not, it's not or... A, it's not like a... Uh, but that's not what this is. This is yeah. to set some basic criteria and then you can that's have it. this, and I know we have the fonts set up really large here, but you can have this sitting off to the side as one of your windows. Correct. And, and then when something happens, uh, it's similar to that high-low window we had open earlier. Yeah, a little, yeah, just a little more information you can filter up through. That's uh, correct. Yeah. So... Where is that at? Uh, here, it's unlabeled. So it's just like having something like this on the screen. So as it hits those levels, it, you can have it sorting by high, low, or, or whatever. And I'm assuming the list won't be as long as it is. Correct. That's just going to give you the day high, day lows. That's uh, just a uh, um, high low ticker is just that. I mean, it's whatever's making, even, whatever's making a day high, day low, you're going to see it in lows on the left, highs on the right. Yeah, so here, look, volume filter. I'm going to set this for something like... Uh, you can see if something trades a million shares, or if, if, if you know, I, I don't know, you want to trade anything that over trades 20 million shares, it'll f filter it out. Right. You know, things well, like that. It's a high range, so let's go 999999. Commit that. And then scan. Okay, now it's looking a little more realistic here. So now you're getting uh, uh, equities that trade more than a million shares in volume. So, and, and it's a much shorter list than I had before. Right. Right. And you know, I guess the more the more criteria you put in there, the less your list will be. Yeah. Now, or famous, will be. Who, who knows? I mean, famous designer said that she's getting a message. You don't have permission for the scanner. <laughs> She don't get permission. I don't. Uh, She's having a I hard don't. time over there. Yeah. See, I don't know. If, are you sure you with uh, Speech Trader? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'll. Uh, I don't think it's a separate thing. I think you, you got to just be permission. I'll. I'll get to have that hooked up for you in the morning, Brenda. If you want me to, just remind me. Okay. And and famous designer, if you, uh, I don't know if you you actually created a scan first because if you hit scan on a blank thing, you might have got that message. I'm not exactly sure. I could take care of it. But he'll definitely uh, set you up tomorrow on that. Okay? So I, I, I'll tell you what. With all the little bumps we had getting the start of the show here, <laughs> I appreciate you, you sticking it out with us. And uh, and we got a chance, I hope, at least to get to a, a few of the new things here, a little bit differently from the first show we did, and, and get into some of the way to route orders and, and uh, how the options platform works a little bit. Yes. And, um Maybe someday in the future we'll figure out the story with the Echo and uh, be able to have you on again. Yeah, maybe uh, we'll shoot again soon, and um, we'll start a little bit earlier. So this way, you know, if we start at maybe 4.15, we can get on at 5 o'clock. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much, Craig. Uh, uh, you it. have a good night now. All right, good night. I'll talk to everyone tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. <coughs> okay. Scritch scratch. Let me find the hang-up button there. So thanks a lot to Speed Trader Craig for coming on the show and, and sharing that information with us um, for the platform. Now this is a, a demo account. If you are interested in the platform, there was an email went out not with a notice about the show tonight. And if you just visit the home page and scroll down underneath the main video, there the announcement should be there. And I posted a link um, to the Speed Trader platform. 
Um, not to mention the banner should be on the site too. It's the same link. If you just click on the Speed Trader banner, which I believe is below the video, and it'll take you over to their page, and you can request a, a demo account and check it out. Oh, I totally recommend uh, getting a demo account before you decide to switch over just blindly from whatever platform you're using. Excuse me. But um, just getting a little dry here. Hold on a second. Okay. <clears throat> Seems like when I stopped talking for a little bit, I ended up uh, drying out. But uh, definitely get the demo, try it out, and look at it during the day, obviously, so you can see the things uh, operating. Uh, if you watch ever so closely, you'll see right now, for example, a couple of trades coming through on this high-low list. And so at least you could tell that, that this is what the demo would normally be doing, giving you this information uh, during the day. And set it up right next to your current platform and try some try to mimic some of your trades. Try to do some paper trades alongside with your real trades and see how the platform behaves, see how it reacts. I guarantee you that uh, if you're just using some very regular off-the-shelf retail software if you're using let's say a, a browser to do your trading and maybe I shouldn't say guarantee because I don't know all the myriad of, of software that's out there but let's just say in my experience um, you you won't see anything like this type of a, of a platform and I you know are there other companies out there that have similar platforms obviously they do you know there's there's not a whole lot of different ways of trading, but the thing with uh, Speed Trader is uh, it's in the name. These trades will get executed quickly, and the more proficient you get with the software, the the quicker you could place your orders. You could spend more time preparing for your orders, doing your studying, getting yourself ready, so that when you want to execute, it can happen, and, and not waste time trying to figure out which box you're supposed to put things in and and you know if I click on the chart if I if I this or that um, in fact let me see if I left, left click on the chart I'm getting the info on the candles if I right click on the chart I'm getting all kinds of options here trend lines studies crosshair toolbar chart area and then of course configure you can set all kinds of goodies there and the thing too is with our arrangement with with Speed Trader is that Craig is in the room many times. So obviously with the help button up here, you have live support, live chat support. You can go through there. But you know what? You remember here with Day Trading Radio, take advantage of the fact that he's in the room many times during the day. Uh, obviously, you know he might step away for a moment or he's on a call with a with a client. Uh, and you'd certainly want him to be focused on you when he's making that call. But on occasion, he'll be there available to answer a question for you. And if he can't help you immediately, then he'll direct you to somebody who can. And you can get your questions answered right away and get back to trading. So I hope you appreciate that. And again, thanks to Craig uh, for checking out checking in with us. And uh, apologize again for the technical difficulties at the start of the show. I'll do my best to edit the show and uh, make it seem like we're all geniuses out there. Of course, now that I said this at the end, you're going to find out when you're at this point of the video that we edited out a lot of things in the beginning. Okay? And we got some new members here checking in, Harpoon Rex. And uh, the question is, did I record it? And yes, it, yes, I did. But, of course, the next step is for me to prep the video for uploading it to our site and getting it ready for you. So that usually, uh, to be honest with you, it takes me a couple days to get to with everything else I have going on, but I will do my best to get that set up for you guys. Um, if you want, you could go into the the uh, daytradingradio.com member forum. There's a button for the forum, and you could go in there and look for the after-hour shows and scroll down for Bry Guys Tools of the Trade, and you'll find an episode that we did in December uh, I believe it was episode 13, and you can find the other version of this show uh, that we covered some other aspects of the software. And then by the time you enjoyed that and digested it, we'll have this one ready to go for you. Okay? 
So thanks again to everyone. Appreciate you sticking around with us and and uh, staying with the show. You're listening to Bry Guy here with the Tools of the Trade Show on DayTradingRadio.com. We'll see you tomorrow in the trading room. Good night, everyone. <laughs>